Hey, uh, Donnie, there's a truck outside getting dropped off. Uh, you know anything about that? Truck. It's the big, giant, white truck, monster, oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one's pretty messed up. You're going to want to take a look at it. It's bad. Like, messed up accident? Like yeah, what's... accident. But it's all, it's all aftermarket, so if he talked to GMC, they wouldn't even touch it. Really? Them over here, yeah. Well, like, it's great they sent him here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go. Uh, Let me grab the keys. How'd they tow it here? Uh, they just dragged it onto, like, a flatbed, but the, one of the wheels was, like, all completely cracked up, not holding air. Like I, I they could literally see, dragged it. I could see it over there leaning, so. Yeah, Keller switched out the... So it's on big wheels, so he switched out one of the, the cracked wheel for the spare, but then when they moved it back out here, it blew out the spare. Did uh, the guy say what happened? Uh, black ice, I guess, slid into the side of the highway, like the concrete wall. Oof. Yeah. So it's really only damaged in one corner, but uh, I guess the wheels were one off, so he's probably going to switch to different wheels and um, yeah, but that's... maybe do some more mods. That's easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like a hodgepodge of a lift kit. It's got stuff from Rough Country, stuff from Vertex. It's got like an actual lift kit stacked on top of a spacer kit. It's a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I don't even know how we're going to get back into the shop. Ugh. So this is the old one. The stuff get bent up and stuff like that, I'm assuming? Yeah, so control arms and then um, like the brake rotor is completely smashed up. The whole knuckle is like cracked and it's an aftermarket knuckle. It's like the Rough Country 5 inch knuckle. Yeah, there's quite a few mods on here. Yeah, it's got a lot. So typically at Fluid Motor Union, we, uh, we're not a body shop. You know, we typically do modifications, um, repair, maintenance, but we do get some insurance work when it's custom work. Now, because we stall a lot of lift kits, we deal with um, aftermarket parts. Some customers might find issues taking their cars to dealerships or even other body shops because they might not be familiar with the modifying of these vehicles to get them back to how they were before the accident. So that's probably why this one found its way to us. The main issue is, is I got to figure out how to get this thing inside. It looks like we got the spare on here, but the spare isn't holding, which means we probably won't be able to drive it in. So the main issue right now would be, can we get air in the spare? Cause Jesus, this thing isn't gonna hold air. Whoa, tires ripped. This thing is destroyed, dude. He hit something hard. Look at this. This is potato chipped in here. You can see the metal completely bent up. He was cruising, dude. All right, so we can try one of those 12 volt pumps, see if we can get this thing aired back up. Um, I've also got an air tank if it doesn't take. But issue number one, let's see if we can get this tire aired up. Now it's not great when you have a four wheel drive car to stick another not the same sized tire on here, but hopefully this has a selectable four wheel drive. But even if it doesn't, it's for a short distance, so it shouldn't do too much damage to the differential, to the transfer case. So, I don't know, we got to kind of put together this puzzle just to get it inside and on a lift for us to see what the heck's going on with this thing. Oh, we've that out of the video. <laughs> for those of you curious, this is Project Karen, our ML project. Uh, it's been running and driving pretty good. Grabbed uh, Keller's air pump. I'm gonna use it to uh, power up this thing. Gonna try to see if we can reseat the bead on this wheel by jacking the car up and then running the air pump to see if we can get it to seal back up so that way we can move this thing. 
Um, but uh, we've got more content coming out in this thing. We got a bunch of parts arriving, including, well, including a uh, interesting way that uh, we're gonna be lifting this thing. Found some Jeep Cherokee parts we might be able to swap over, but more on that coming up. Let's get this thing in the air. This little air pump's pretty good uh, for us to be able to pump air into tires when we have this sort of situation. Works out pretty well for what we need it for for the shop. Uh, I'll drop a link below uh, if you guys wanna grab one yourself. Um, if this doesn't work, we're gonna have to go to an air tank setup, probably run a, uh, a main line off of our cheetah that we use to see beads. Um, but I'd say eight times, nine times out of 10, this thing will do the trick. Let's see if it works. I hear something. Hear it leaking right out. So the main issue is this tire bead so folded up in the backside that it just letting air straight out. So if we could get this thing to roll around, holy crap, the brake rotor isn't even on here. It's just completely broken free. Would this thing even spin if we got this on? I don't know, man. Woo, this looks bad. So, Maybe if I could spin the wheel around, I could probably, I shouldn't say probably, maybe I can get the bead to seat. Either way, we gotta get the bead to seat even if we're using the, uh, the bigger tank. So, I don't know, let's see if we can figure out a way to get this wheel to move. Do you wanna run and get a jack stand? Just so we're not risking our lives mm -hmm. here. Very nice, I like. All right, so uh, two challenges here. Getting the bead seated, but the main issue is without removing the tire, I've got to get this thing to roll around, which I don't really feel like dismounting the tire here, although it's probably gonna to have to turn into that, but let's give it a shot real quick, try to see if we can get uh, this thing in neutral, the transfer case disconnected, and if I can, I might be able to just spin the tire by hand, get it in position to reseat the bead, but if not, we're gonna to have to take it off and try to do it inside. Typically we'd use a jump box, but because this thing's been dead for so long, I don't know if it's gonna have enough juice to like kick this thing over. Whoa. You never know what state your car is gonna be when it has an accident. So it's best to try to keep it clean, but we see this sort of stuff. It's normal, especially if you're digging through stuff when you go to uh, find your insurance work before your car gets towed. So. Um, does this thing have a, do you see a selectable four wheel drive? Yeah, it's right here. It's electric. Should I try and key it on? Um, let's key it on right now. Yeah. It's not doing anything. Yeah, we might have to get it started before, but let's give it a few more minutes to charge that battery up before we try to kick it over. All right, just making sure we're safe. This thing's obviously going to be super unstable with us trying to move the wheel around. So safety first. Let's see if we get the jack somewhere else where we can get this thing a little higher. That'll work. Look at this. That's wild. I wonder how that's gonna feel to pull in. Woo! So this wheel's too badly damaged in the rear, and uh, I don't even know if we get this thing seated, if it's gonna fill up. So either way, this wheel's gotta come off. All right. Oh man, now it looked bad from behind the wheel and looks like just that small amount of getting it moved around and on the tow truck damaged this wheel pretty good. Enough that it cut into the tire. So I don't even know if we can get this thing to reseat. Oh man, look at the damage here, check this out. I mean, we've got a wheel bearing that's about to fall apart, a broken free spinning brake rotor. The caliper is completely destroyed and bent here. It's just all the way over the side. I mean, this thing is wrecked, which kind of leaves the question, even if I got this thing on the lift right now, we'd almost need the parts to go back on immediately for us to not have this thing get stuck. And I'm looking at all this stuff. It might be a difficult 
problem in itself, just getting this stuff here in order to replace it. So that would mean that once I get this thing on the lift, it's got to stay there. And some of this stuff for lifting this car might not be readily available. It might take a few days, weeks, months. Oh man, we're gonna have to get with Donnie and try to see exactly what we need to get this thing back right, which kind of begs the question of modifying these vehicles. When you have something like this happen, what do you do when it comes time to replace and repair? I feel like a lot of this stuff, you know, is going to be difficult to not only source, but what if we just need to get one part, you know? Um, a lot of times the lift kits are sold in sets and, in a, you know, complete configurations and uh, getting one component, you know, you might have to call, email, just say, hey, can I just get one part out of this kit that comes as a whole set? And who knows if they'd even want to do that? I mean, this is going to be an interesting fix. I definitely want to get it on a lift to see more what's going on. But if we do that, this car is going to be down for a while. And you could see the difficulty we're already having just moving this thing around. All right, so the idea here is I got to know what we're working with. This appears to be some sort of center drop kit. Now a center drop kit, what it does is it moves the points of um, attachment of the control arms down from the body a little bit further to give the car some additional clearance. From the RC that's stamped into this thing, I'm going to assume that's rough country. And from other center drop kits that I've seen, they usually come with knuckles, which that one is pretty banged up. That doesn't look like even if we got it apart, it's either possibly bent or so damaged from that axle moving around inside of here that we're not going to want to put that back on. The upular, upper tubular control arms here, I can't tell what brand that is, but those are definitely aftermarket. And I almost can guarantee that there's either a bend or something wrong in those guys. So that's at least two parts we're going to need to replace in order to get this thing rolling again. Um, axles obviously shot, but that should be factory. It's hard to tell precisely, but, um, oh yeah, rough country right here. So this is a part of the rough country kit. Um, I think a lot of times with rough country, if you go to order individual pieces, getting them from them actually ends up if you're doing it a la carte, ends up being more expensive than just buying another kit. So being that this is an insurance job, this might be something where we go to price it out and those pieces, the cost of them could be more for just replacing singular pieces. Maybe he'll want to do some sort of upgrade, um, a different brand, who knows. Um, but there's so much to figure out here. And like I said, with that wheel being that damaged, and us not knowing exactly how this is going to be resolved. Um, it's not like we're just ordering factory pieces to slap back on here. We're going to need some time with it and we're a busy shop. You know, I can't have a truck sitting on a lift for two months um, while we wait and try to figure this all out. So what the plan unfortunately is going to have to be is to get this thing back sitting safe and let's get on the computer and try to see how this stuff can get ordered and what the options are and kind of what the customer wants to do. This is great info. If you're thinking about lifting your car or you have lifted your car, what happens in the event when something like this happens? So we'll kind of go over some of the difficulties, but uh, this looks like a mess, man. All right, so after looking into um, the replacement options for parts on this truck, we've got a couple of problems. One, the wheels that are on that truck have been discontinued, so we cannot order a replacement. Um, that means that this guy's gonna either have to revert back to stock or replace all four wheels with different wheels. Um, so after talking to him, it sounds like he's got something nice that he's gonna be dropping off here shortly. So we'll see that in a few. 
Um, in the meantime, I spoke with Rough Country about the lift kit. And after pricing out the um, replacement components that we would need to order, it actually exceeds the retail cost of an entire new kit. So you can get a whole new kit for a thousand bucks even from them versus buying the three pieces that we need would come out to 1200 bucks, which doesn't really make sense if you ask me, but that's what we're working with. So as long as we're gonna be replacing this stuff and having to order an entire kit, might as well go bigger, right? Having a modified car is one of the best feelings in the world until something like this happens. Another example of even at a professional level, fixing cars just doesn't always go to plan. But that's okay because who better to turn problems into opportunities than FMU? The idea would be to get these things on here so the next time you see this car, it'll be sitting right. That's all for today. Remember guys, like, subscribe, share, throw a comment down below, but I'll be talking to you guys next time.